Hi, my name is Phil and welcome to the last Labour Vision, talking about Labour policies whilst they're still hypothetical for this last episode just for the election. As we're necessarily looking towards the future, I thought, well, why not a theme on policies that will particularly benefit young people? Because those just becoming old enough to vote now and who have the option of taking part in their very first general election this year, as I did in 1997, will be able to vote in order to get those behind them a better childhood than the one they had under the Tories. So let's kick off with the obvious ones first. Uh, Labour are going to lower the voting age to 16 at long last, which will equalise voting age across the UK because it's already 16 for purely Scottish and Welsh democratic matters. This gives further enfranchisement to younger people, but it benefits lots of others. After all, you think to yourself, OK, if you're old enough to vote in this election, how does this help you? Because you're always going to be old enough. You ain't getting any younger. Well, many of your concerns are also the concerns of those a few years younger that cannot vote in this election. And you'll now have a louder voice at the next election. Winning elections is all about targeting the policies which attract the most efficient voting returns. So the more votes which can be pinned to a particular policy, the more likely that policy is to be adopted as a priority by politicians. And what are the priorities of young people? It is not tax cuts or corporate profits, is it? It's the climate emergency, basic rates of pay, education, transport, housing. The things which also matter, as it happens, to millions of other people. So this one policy isn't exactly a magic bullet, but it does shift the dial slightly in the right direction. Next would be the minimum wage, which I still insist on calling the minimum wage, despite the fact the Tories officially now call it the living wage. Right now, it's in bands. The youngest workers get a much smaller wage than those of, say, 21 years of age and older. Labour are going to scrap the bands. They have a single minimum wage rate, which will also take account of the real cost of living as well, making it a genuinely living wage in time for everyone. This will mean that the youngest workers will be getting a big boost to their pay in this coming parliament. Labour will also be developing what they call the Young Futures programme. So this is hubs around different communities, which will provide access to things like mental health services, youth workers, career advisors. Basically, a range of services targeting young people that say, let's help you. Labour had similar services focused on helping young people get their start in life during their last period in government. Because this is the thing, the Tories just have this attitude of just it's sink or swim with the Tories. They just throw everyone into society and say, met the best of it. Oh, but they make sure that their own kids are privately educated to make sure that they get all of those advantages that they deny everyone else. Like Angela Rayner talks fondly about how Sure Start centres helped her. Since the Tories came to power, all disappeared, all gone. Sink or swim. Nothing left anymore. This will be changing over the next parliament. In terms of girls and young women in particular, Labour are going to be implementing policies which prioritises the teaching of health relationships with dedicated police units, which will make sure that abuse is dealt with as a priority. Uh, you know, there are a lot of young women, for example, in abusive situations who don't really feel there's any recourse. So there's no point in going to the authorities. That needs to change. That perception needs to change and that reality needs to change. Labour have got aims of cutting violence against women in half over the next decade. Uh, there are other legal areas where Labour are going to be strengthening things as well, such as on like stalking, for example. Uh, predictably, Labour have plans to beef up investment in education, beginning with childcare and early years, uh, just as before, but also a focus on apprenticeships as well. This will boost the potential for the upcoming generation to make the best of opportunities. Impossible to overstate the difference it makes getting education right to people's potential. The reason the right wing are whining about private school fees is because they get it. They understand how important education is. That's why they want private schools for their kids. And they want schools, state schools to be crap so that there's little competition for their own family in life. They'll only have to compete. Their own kids will only have to compete with other people who went to private schools, not everyone else. Then there's housing. Labour are making a lot of the fact that for young people, it's become harder to dream of home ownership, where progress in previous generations was improving. Not only will Labour be building more homes than the Tories, but first time buyers will be given first choice on new builds. The manifesto specifically cites the problem of entire new developments being bought up by international investors under the current system and then just sold on for huge profits. Now, with Labour, 
Not only should there be less pressure on housing eventually, because supply should increase relative to demand, but those who need the housing, you know, to live in it, I want a house to live in. They will be prioritised are those who are just looking to profit. And these are just the policies I picked out which particularly impact young people. There are others as well, which of course benefit everyone, young people included. Basically, if you're only just old enough to vote now, I'm afraid the Tories screwed you over, but the future can still look better in time and we can stop them screwing up the generation coming up behind you. But there we are, last little look at what it might be before it starts being put into practice. I'm afraid politics doesn't have access to magic wand, so although there will be some policies which will make an instant difference to some people, such as abolishing no-fault evictions this summer, most of us will see the positive changes happening more slowly over a period of years, so it will take a few years to really evaluate. But let me know what you think in the comments, please, and if you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, I'll see you later.